Hey guys, how are you? It is, uh, wow, December the 13th. That's just crazy, isn't it? Yeah. It's so cliche, but where's the year went? Just poof, just like that, and it's gone. Man, oh man, I tell you. <laughs> been quite the show. Okay, so we'll just lodge into the topic. Uh, anything else? No, I think that's it. Let's just head into the topic. <laughs> So this is something that probably won't be new to you, but I think, oh, hey, Ellie, how you doing? Hopefully everything's working. There's no echo. There's no whatever. I think everything might be the way it's supposed to be. We'll see. One of the things this, you've heard me say this before. I, I actually have done teachings on it. I call it the lost art of studying. And so often I find that we tend to, it's almost like you learn something like the first go through. And okay, I've got that. It's like a shopping list, right? Okay, I went through that. I've read that. I went through this course. I've done this, whatever. Okay, now I'm on to the next thing. And and we have this tendency to not go back to something. So it's if you got a shopping list and if milk was on it and then you got milk, then you go, well, I don't need to go back to the dairy because I've already got milk. But, but here's the thing, we can study, and you guys know I've been doing this forever, we can study the same truth and get new meaning from it every time we study it. And that's why for me, when I call it the lost art of study, is to, to reread the books, to, to rewatch the videos, to, to think about, even just to think about something that you've always known. But you think about it again and contemplate it again. And this was again popped up with, uh, I think it was a video I was watching, talking about our subconscious mind and how it all works. Let's just go to the flip chart. So there's your, your conscious mind, and then there is the subconscious. So there is you and somebody else and somebody else and somebody else. And we'll just do our I am. So this is you. This is somebody else, right? So your I am is your soul, your spirit, higher self, whatever labels you wish to use. This is your conscious mind, right? So I have one. Uh, this person has one. This person has one. This person has one. Then there is... The the subconscious. Now this is the first, and again, this this like I guess initially it, it can really warp your brain. But and you've heard me say this before. What's really interesting is these concepts are not new. These understandings, and again, like peer reviewed. Uh, studies and research and it goes on and on and on uh, they you know the the uh oh goodness the neuroscientists and things like this they have no problem with this concept it's just well of course that's true so just this first this first comment um this first fact really is you have a conscious mind i have a conscious mind but there is one subconscious mind See, and that's where the connectedness happens. So, so when when you look out at your your external experience, and I look out, and somebody else looks out, we each have our own unique experiences of the external stimulus. But we're all in the same pool here. And the way I like to explain it, <laughs> it's really accurate analogy. Actually, is this is a swimming pool. And you're in the swimming pool, I'm in the swimming pool, this other person's in the swimming pool. So this is the water that's around me, and you have water that's around me, you, but we're all in the same swimming pool. Now, <clears throat> interesting throat chakra. If I pee in the pool, it's going to be concentrated around me, but it can also migrate and navigate uh, throughout the entire pool when you think about it. Now, even that truth just shakes everything in so many ways. So a lot of you folks here are, are Reiki practitioners or some type of healing practitioner and things like that. And, and this is where 
this whole thing about distance healing often kind of trips us up because when we we think about distance healing we think about i am here and you are over there and when i give you a treatment i'm sort of reaching out somehow and connecting to you but what's really happening is the connecting is happening in here so it's not so much that we're reaching out over distance in many ways when you're doing a quote unquote distance treatment you're you're pointing this way which is why it's a, oh i didn't plan on teaching this but we'll just go there which is why the stories that we tell ourselves about somebody else are so powerful because all joking aside it's peeing in the pool and here's the um i guess the the two sides of an increased awareness and also meditation so one of the things that happens when when we're in that meditative state is we have greater conscious access to this now what does that mean that means that the thoughts that i am thinking the stories that i'm telling myself the internal dialogue that I'm nurturing, that I'm focusing on. Not every errant thought that goes through my mind, but the, the flavoring or the theme of the thoughts that I'm thinking about or focusing on are actually going to radiate out into the subconscious. And if it's something about this person, guess what happens? It's going to make its way to there. Which is why, and you've heard me say this too, with increased awareness and increased privileges comes increased responsibilities because the thoughts that you are consistently thinking right remember that it's not like every thought that goes into your head right it's the theme of thoughts what's the consistent story you tell yourself or you tell yourself about somebody or something else not not every line in the story but what's the theme what's that theme of the story that you keep telling because that's going to radiate out from you in a more powerful, better way to say it, with more clarity. And with clarity comes power. And that other person is going to feel it. Whether they're conscious of it or not, they probably won't be conscious of it, but they are going to feel it. Now, does that mean we can control their thoughts? Absolutely not. But what it does mean is that information is migrating through and past them and you just never know when they may grab hold of it and make it their own so as this information is flowing over here right about this person you never know when they may actually choose to make it their own and now it is their own and so well we can't control somebody else's thinking. We can send that program out. And therefore, and then the chances of them picking that program up are a lot greater. It's always their choice. But if the program's never being broadcast, how could they possibly hear it? This, this isn't my analogy that's used all over the place. That your mind, your conscious mind is very much like a broadcaster and a receiver. So it's broadcasting this message. It's broadcasting excuse me, is broadcasting this program. And if you broadcast the program, somebody or somebody's just may tune into it. Now, again, you don't have any control whether they do tune into it. But if you're never broadcasting the program, then they're never going to be able to tune into it, which is why, wow, this is interesting, which is why consistency, which is why perseverance, which is why bullheaded stubbornness is so powerful and so valuable. Because if you th you think about this, if you're broadcasting this program, and if you broadcast it, so it's a, it's a, a radio station. So if you're only sending that, that programming out for like, I don't know, an hour of the day, I'm just making up times now, the chances of that other person picking it up are pretty slim. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to do it 24 hours a day. It's about consistency, not constancy. And for me, it's what it's really about is clarity. It's about in your conscious mind, your conscious mind, 
being aware, oh, interesting, okay, being aware of what are the stories, what are the themes of the stories that you're telling about yourself and about others. Because your subconscious, better said, the subconscious, is always absorbing. It's always absorbing what you choose to focus on. Not so much every errant thought that goes through your awareness, but it's those stories, the themes of your thoughts, the consistent themes of your thoughts. That's what the subconscious mind is absorbing and taking in. And as you consistently send out that signal, send out that signal, send out that signal, send out that signal, not constantly, right? Consistently and with clarity. And when the stories start to shift and it's not playing the music that you want to send out, well, then change the music. See, that's the power of your conscious mind. It has the ability to choose what it focuses on. The subconscious doesn't. It takes whatever you give it and starts to radiate it out. But your conscious mind, this isn't my, I hear this all the time, very much is like the gatekeeper. So what it does is it goes, okay, do I want to focus on the theme of this thought? Oh, there we are. Um, <laughs> my window is really narrow, so that comment come in and it's, oh, there we are. <laughs> Thanks, Shelly. Uh, how can they believe unless they hear the message? Oh, yeah. That, that, well, there you go. And that's the thing, right? I think that that is so true. And that's where we trip us. Um, so an intercessor, right? That And this often is called intercessory prayer. What are we doing, right? Is we're sending out that signal. We're sending out that program. And and the whole thing about, again, choosing, like, let's, like taking the position of the solution, of it, uh, the wish already fulfilled, of uh, the prayer already answered. I mean, it's just, there's a hundred different ways of saying the same damn thing. Thinking from the end. How do you wish to see that person? You go, well, well, who do you think you are trying to control that other person? No, you can't control the other person, but you can send the signal out. You can send the program out. And then they're going to choose what they're going to do with it. But just as you said, Elliot, it's so perfectly. If you're not sending the program out, whoa, huh, then who will? Right? And I think, I, think, I did not plan on doing this. Because it's so easy, especially now, to tell stories, like the thoughts in our mind, the dialogues that come on, that are not edifying at all. Maybe they never have been. But we can tell a different story on their behalf. In the master's class, Pretty sure I actually even use the word intercessor. And in many respects, we're not doing a treatment or giving a treatment to them. We're interceding on their behalf with the subconscious, and we'll just stick with that for now. Telling a better story, a better feeling story, a more edifying story, a more solution referenced story about them. And as we send that signal out, Send it out, send it out, send it out, send it out. The chances of them hearing it are a lot greater if we never sent it out in the first place. What I believe now, what I've heard now, is that our ability to influence change, not control, but to influence change, probably has never been greater, at least in our lifetime. And, and this is the time to tell that better feeling story about your life, too, about your life experience and about those around you. Because we are far more powerful than we realize. And for our purposes here, where does that power come from? It comes from the clarity of the story that you tell. Okay. Thanks for that. That was really good. I had not intended on going that direction, so that means it must have been pretty damn good. <laughs> All right, let's flip over to the convergence portion of the show. Okay, uh, I'm just going to let this go down here. Okay, good. Yeah, and stuff. So, 
I posted a picture on Instagram last night. So like I said, it's December 13th. So it would have been last night. And the quote on it was, and of course I'm not going to have it in front of me, something to the effect of, you don't have to achieve your desire to feel good. You just have to be moving towards it. Now that's that's a really important thing to remember is that it's my old hashtag, right? I want to feel good. Haven't used that one for a while now, but it's that I want to feel good. And and so first of all, feeling good is just, well, it feels good. You know, I'm, <laughs> there you go. It feels good. So there, okay. But But the other thing is, as we move towards our desire and our desire is moving towards us, how do we know that's happening? Now, I want to clarify this. We feel good. Now, that process, right, of you radiating a signal and then it moving towards you, that, I have my open window up here, but that process will take the path of least resistance. It doesn't take the path of no resistance. So, and I actually, I think maybe the last show or something like that, I talked about that. How is that you're here, your desire is here. And it, as it's moving, as those two are moving together, it's like squishing out any of the obstacles that's stopping that process or hindering that process from just naturally the two becoming one. Now, as that process is happening, you can bet your ass there's going to be some times where it does not feel good, period. So it doesn't mean that if you're doing things right, you will always feel, right? And I think that that's the thing. We don't we don't master life. We master managing life. So yes, there's going to be those mountaintops experience. And yes, there's going to be those ones when you're dragging your ass across the carpet. This is where, as I said in the first portion of the show, persistence, consistence, bullheaded stubbornness is so powerful. But the better we know about the mechanics of the process, the more efficiently we can manage it and we can maximize the feeling good moments and we can more efficiently not avoid them, but move through those moments when we're not feeling good. Okay. So what's one of the indicators that this is happening? You're feeling good. Now, again, will that happen hundred percent of the time? No, but the more we focus on feeling good, the more we're supporting this process. Okay, does that make sense? Now, it and here's the thing, it really doesn't matter what we do to feel good. Now, when I'm saying feeling good, what do I mean? We physically feel pleasure, right? We feel pleasure in our bodies. Our body's this wonderful indicator. Which is interesting, pleasure and pain have this wonderful relationship, which is topic for another um, discussion. And understanding the role that pleasure and pain have. And in many respects, they're like this, right? They can flip from one to the other very easily. And they almost can mesh together. But anyway, topic for another discussion. So to introduce the vibrations into your body that cause the sensation of pleasure. Right? And I'm not even labeling the motion. Forget about that for now. What can you do to create the vibrations, the sensations in your body that's pleasurable? And here's the thing. It doesn't matter what you do to create the sensations. What we tend to do, believe me, I do it more than I should. <laughs> is we use this desire that we just really, really want, and it's, you know, maybe it's, oh, when it's not going to be here, it's going to take forever, blah, 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 blah. We try to feel good about that. Well, you probably, you know, I'm not saying you never can, but that's kind of one of the most difficult ones because, of course, as soon as you do that, it's squishing out the other stuff, so now you're going, ah, oh, it's not going to be here yet, all that kind of stuff. So, so often, the best thing to do is not try and and use the things that you're trying to manifest, they aren't here yet, the things you want to change, all that kind of stuff, not to try and make yourself feeling good with that. Choose something that has nothing to do with that. Remember the path of least resistance. 
What's the easiest thing you can do, both internally and externally, right? What's the best feeling story you can tell yourself that has probably nothing to do with what you're trying to manifest? Tell me now. We want to take the path of least resistance to feeling good, not the thing that we've been feeling shitty about for so long because it's not here and it's difficult and all that kind of stuff. But we feel that that's what we have to do. But you see, putting your body in that vibrational state of feeling pleasure, it doesn't matter. That's what you're trying to do. Because that, now you're supporting the process rather than hindering it. So what is it? What is it internally? What are, what are the memories you would like to call it? What are the visualizations you would call it? All this kind of stuff. What can you do that causes you to feel good? And what can you do externally that cause yourself to feel good too? See, see, that's the thing. It doesn't matter what you do to feel physical pleasure. It's just that you do. And it, it kind of warps again. It's one of those brain warpers again because you go, well, but there's this thing I'm really working at and I just, again, it's difficult and challenging. And so I need to feel good about it. Well, I'm not saying you can't, but you've got all this other resistance happening at the same time. So let's take the easy way out. Let's pick something that has nothing to do with what you're trying to desire, what, what you're trying to manifest internally and or externally using both to create that vibrational state of in your body that see that's why feeling good or a more accurate way to say it feeling sensual pleasure five senses pleasure right mm. oh mm. right whatever it is and that's why sometimes Taking your mind off it. So what do we mean by that? Well, just leave that thing alone that you've been trying to manifest so hard and find the easiest thing you can do, both with your non-physical, the pictures or movies, voices or dialogues, and the physical, to create those sensations in your body of sensual pleasure, right? It feels good. Five senses feels good. Because when you do that, you are now supporting that whole manifesting process. You're not hindering it. Okay, so now this source just showed up for this. So what? Huh, okay, well, here we go. Why is it so often, it seems, that when we feel deep, sensual pleasure, whatever that looks like, that it's not uncommon that as that kind of as that natural flow that pain will come right after or even in the middle of it right could be that physical pain well first of all pain gets a bad rap because we've decided pain is bad but what's interesting and there's all sorts of really cool studies about this that as i said sort of that vibration of pain and pleasure they're not so much like this they're like this on two sides of the same axes. And so what tends to happen is that pleasure increases, right? So what it's going to do is it's going to help support the manifesting process. So as you're supporting the manifesting process, those obstacles are now going to be released. So it's not uncommon as the pleasure grows, the potential for this pain will go. But the pleasure is actually helping to release. And as it's releasing, we feel that temporary transient pain. But because there's so much immersed pleasure in it, it almost like it, it confuses her mind in some respect and, and just changes the whole construct of what feeling that pain is like. And it's like the pleasure washes over the pain. So yes, the pain is there, but it, it's just so overwhelmed by the pleasure that it just pops like that and it pops like that and it pops like that. Of course, as that is released, that energy that was producing what we call pain now can be used to produce what we call pleasure. And, and there's often people, they, they really have a, a hesitancy to actually feel good, just really feel good, to really feel that pleasure, because so often there's that, it's like that whiplash right after it. But I think as we understand that process that's happening, it really helps us navigate, navigate that some more. All right, that was, that was really good. 
Uh, both of those weren't exactly what I wanted to talk or I intended in talking about. So that, again, must have been that they were pretty good. <laughs> right, guys. Um, thanks for tuning in and we'll uh, see you on the web.